Have you ever wondered what companies may be hitting your website and whether or not they have buying intent? Well, the new buyer intent from HubSpot, part of their new Breeze AI intelligence, will actually help you get visibility into that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the tool, some things to keep in mind, and how you might wanna filter that data. So the way HubSpot defines buyer intent is the companies that are visiting your website and potentially showing interest in working with your brand. Now, where you're going to find this on HubSpot, it's available in all levels, whether it's free all the way up to the enterprise version, but some of the functionality in terms of enriching records is only available when you actually purchase the Breeze add-on. So I'm going to show you where to find this right here in the left-hand side of the menu. You're going to go to the marketing widget and you're going to go down to this buyer intent. At the recording of this video, it's actually in beta. So if you don't have this in your portal, you may need to go to your product updates and actually look to make sure you enroll in that beta. Now here at this screen, I've already set up one specific um, target intent in terms of a target market, but I'm gonna walk you through that. So here we've got the overview tab, which will show you what you've set up. You've got the companies that fit that description and then the configuration. So where you wanna start is you wanna actually start with this configuration. So here, if you're gonna start and you didn't have one set up already, you're gonna add a target market. So here in this target market breakdown, it's gonna ask you things like industries, keywords, employee range, the countries you wanna track, the states, the cities, the web technologies, and then the revenue. So think about this just like you would if you used a tool where you're actually looking at you know, purchasing a list or having some sort of database built for you, you're gonna need these demographic filters. Now here, you may want to look at what types of industries are already available because this is gonna be using a predefined dropdown list that HubSpot uses this is the same industry filter they use when they populated records back when HubSpot used to automatically fill in those for you uh, back in the olden days. Now, in terms of filters, you also want to exclude any industries such as like for us, we're a HubSpot consulting company, so we don't want to have other folks who may do the same thing as us being tracked in our buying intent. So again, keep that in mind. So you're gonna go through this. Company keywords, this is going to be a predefined list of keywords. If you click here, you can actually see what that predefined list of keywords is here. You can download that and actually see that list of tags in a comprehensive view in a spreadsheet. So let's go back to this here. Let's assume that we've already set this up and we're gonna hit create target market. Once you do that, it's going to ask you to uh, go ahead and name that target market. So here we've named ours, professional services, management consulting. So we're actually, we're with a lot of folks in that space and this is actually one of the markets that we're looking at. You actually have to have the HubSpot tracking code enabled or installed on your website in order for this to work. So if you've already got it installed, you should be fine. If you're new to HubSpot, make sure that's done first before you set this up. We've already set this up, so we have 513 companies that match this criteria right now just after setting up that filter. Now, the next thing you wanna do is set up your intent criteria. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're actually just gonna set up a pretty basic one. So we do HubSpot Consulting again. Any of our blogs or any of our um, content on our website that include the word HubSpot in the URL, that's a good opportunity for us to track that engagement because we, since we're not HubSpot, if someone's learning about something to do in HubSpot, there's a good chance that there's an opportunity for us to help them. So if the path contains HubSpot and they've had two visits from two different visitors on the company, actually let's, let's get this down to one because it might just be their marketing director. And the time frame I want here is I want this to be in, let's say the last hmm, 90 days and we're gonna click on save. Now, when you do this, you can also add additional criteria. So let's say you wanted to exclude pages. So this might be where you exclude a page like the careers page. If somebody visited a blog about your company and then visited the careers page, they're probably more of a person looking for an opportunity or seeing about the growth of your company than they are someone interested in your services. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. And the last piece is again, reminding you that you need to install that tracking code. Again, if your website is built on HubSpot, this is done automatically. If you're using a subdomain such as, you know, info dot or careers dot or whatever, that code's part of the HubSpot build. But if you're on an external tool, like let's say Webflow, WordPress, any of those, you're gonna need to install this as well. Okay, so that's gonna be the configuration piece. Next, let's go into the companies and let's see what this shows us. So now that we've got that set up on the configuration side, this company's view is what's going to show us of companies who've hit our domain in the past 90 days based on that information I just provided. So over on the left-hand side, we can actually change this uh, filter so we can actually go a little bit farther down. Now, actually a quick note, what I just set up was the buyer intent, so let me clarify. If I toggle this on, this shows the people or companies that actually fit that criteria. So in this case, we've only got, it looks like, 
I'm not gonna count them directly, but with 25 per page, we can assume there's less than 25 companies that fit that criteria of buying intent in the last 90 days, okay? So this is really interesting. So what I can do here is I can actually then click on view activity. And when I click in view activity, I can actually see the pages that they visited. So whether you're in a sales capacity or in a marketing capacity, the thing here that's interesting is I can actually see a little bit of the activity and maybe what might be the path for someone going through our website and actually exploring all these pages. So for example, I've got the top 26 HubSpot hacks for marketing pros. Okay, I might assume that they're actually in a marketing capacity. Looks like they did sign up for our newsletter. So if they sign up for our newsletter now, I know that I can actually go back and look at that individual person because now we've got a contact in the system. But if I wanted to actually take further action on this specific activity, I could then enroll in a workflow or add to a static list if I had that add-on of Breeze Intelligence. So again, that's an additional upgrade, but if you wanted to take advantage of that, which I think it's a good opportunity, this is a really good conversation to have with your sales and marketing team about budgeting for this particular feature. Now, if you look at over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna remove this showing intent, and I'm also going to look at just in my target markets. Okay, so if I get in my target markets, you'll see that nobody hit that management consulting specific piece, but if I look at the ones that actually had buying intent, Again, with that filter of visited a page with HubSpot, that's what that toggle is going to show. Now, depending on how many target markets I have, this was where you can actually then increase that flexibility. We work with a lot of folks that have uh, different industry specificities, but quite frankly, since we work with a lot of folks that just use HubSpot, our buying intent is you either need to be looking to buy HubSpot and we can help you get it set up or you're already using it. So again, how I configure these filters might be different than how you would. So now if you look at the way you can filter this, you can look at companies that are already in your CRM, companies that are not in your CRM. You can filter by life cycle stage. You can filter by deal stage, who owns them. And then we can also look at this view. It looks like I had this preset up before to just show me organic social. So if I uncheck this, it'll show me all of the people that fit this specific criteria. So let's go back to buying intent. We're gonna click on they show intent. So they visited any of those pages with that specific word in the path. And then if I wanted to go to see how many of these people were coming from our email marketing campaigns, I could click on that here. And it looks like none of them were from that email marketing campaign. If I go back into organic social, which would include things like YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitter, again, let's go back and actually click on the right one here, organic social. Again, you can see that this is where these folks came from. So if I wanna save this view, then I can create that view and share that with other folks in the organization. But this gives you a lot of insight and something you might be able to operationalize in your sales and marketing efforts. Now, the last tab here is going to be our overview tab. This gives you an idea of what they're calling the intent funnel. So if you wanted to change this from the seven to 14 to 30 days, this just gives you an overview. And then again, as you scroll down, the more you have this set up with your target accounts and hot accounts, you can actually then identify companies that may fit that and give that to you here on the summary view. So that in a nutshell is buying intent inside of HubSpot. It helps you understand what companies are hitting your website and whether or not they have buying intent and if they're in your target market. Now, again, remember this is available to everyone throughout the entire HubSpot license structure, but that specific seeing people beyond 20 contacts, you're gonna actually have to have that Bria's intelligence purchased or 20 contacts, but beyond 20 companies. And then if you actually want to then move that into workflows and use that data in the other parts of HubSpot, you will need to upgrade. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.